Does Paul Hollywood really bake all of those example cakes? Who comes up with the show's smutty jokes? And is any of the show fake? Grab your aprons and oven mitts, we're sneaking our way under the Great British Bake Off tent. Overnight fame is as integral to the Great British Bake Off as flour, eggs, and soggy bottoms. Picking a favorite and rooting for them to survive the tribulations of Bread Week whilst under the taut white canopy of the Bake Off tent is part of what makes the show so enjoyable. Fortunately, the arduous audition process ensures that the final 12 contestants are capable of coping with the sudden global attention, primarily through a meeting with the show's psychologist prior to filming. And for some, the spotlight does not fade, but only intensifies with time. Nadia Hussein is one such contestant. Labeled the nation's sweetheart, Hussein has given a masterclass in how to use a cooking show to permanently change your life. She had the best start possible, winning season six in impressive fashion. After her victory, she wasted no time in returning to the television screen, hosting a two-part travelogue titled The Chronicles of Nadia on BBC One. Now, with her sixth cookbook on the way and a monthly column in The Times, Hussein has solidified her place amongst Britain's culinary superstars, even making a cake for the Queen's 90th birthday. My dad now introduces me as, this is the daughter that made the cake for the Queen. I don't even have a name anymore. <laughs> With an MBE for services to broadcasting and the culinary arts to her name, Hussein shows no sign of slowing down and remains a near-permanent fixture on TV screens throughout Britain and beyond. How many times have you watched Bake Off and then instantly gone to the store to stock your cupboards full of ingredients you had never previously heard of? If the answer is frequently, rest assured that you do not stand alone. The Bake Off effect, a term coined to describe the sudden surge in sales of products used on the show, has firmly taken root in the United Kingdom. As reported by The Express, the 2015 season alone caused a 33% leap in sales of salted caramel sauce, a 180% spike for Peruvian goldenberries, and a 300% increase in the sales of crystallized ginger. Whilst a boost in baking essentials such as flour and cooking chocolate is a common feature with each season, the surge in unusual ingredients is much harder to predict. And as supermarkets get no warning as to what ingredients are going to be used in the upcoming season, many are left scrambling to stock up on previously unknown and unstocked items. Morrison's, which is reportedly the fourth largest supermarket in the UK, takes the Bake Off effect extremely seriously. In fact, in 2016, they appointed a Bake Off officer to monitor the show for buying trends. We wouldn't be human if we didn't occasionally imagine ourselves striding confidently into the Bake Off tent, maybe even high-fiving host Noel Fielding on the way. But realizing this dream is not as simple as you may think. As Season 8 finalist Stephen Carter Bailey revealed, the application process is pretty grueling. Detailing the process, he told Mashed, constant questions, interviews, questions, interviews, credit checks, police checks, health checks, psychiatric checks, ability checks, you're constantly going down in front of cameras getting checked for stress levels. As reported by Telemix, the audition process for The Great British Bake Off in 2022 involved a set of strict rules. For example, contestants could not make their living as a professional baker, chef, or cook and could not have acquired a cooking qualification within the 10 years prior to their application. Never baked before, let alone competitively, let alone on Bake Off. Even after meeting these requirements and completing a long application form, contestants still have a phone interview to look forward to before being invited to London for further interviews and a screen test. Applicants are also obligated to bring some of their own bakes for this visit at their own cost. Talk about stressful. Uh, can you tell us about your flapjack, please? Started making it, had a breakdown. <laughs> what bon appetit. <laughs> Bake Off is just as much about the people as it is about the cakes, and this fact has not been lost on the production team. Throughout the show's 12 seasons, contestants of all ages, professions, body types, sexualities, and ethnicities have been represented. More importantly, the series never turns a person's diversity into a sob story for entertainment value. 
For instance, 2018 semifinalist Bryony e. Williams' limb difference was given so little focus by the production team that many viewers didn't even notice it until after the third episode. The show has also come to represent a modern, ethnically diverse British population, which has been used as a counter to anti-immigration rhetoric. Global Citizen has even highlighted the importance that the show's inclusion of all British identities brings. The sight of Paul Hollywood and Prue Leith sitting around the table with a perfectly formed, impeccably baked technical challenge in front of them is the endearing image of the Great British Bake Off. Despite viewers being led to believe otherwise, the judges do not take turns baking the masterpieces themselves. In actuality, the judges never bake the example cakes themselves. It all boils down to timing. Shooting days are so long, and the judges' efforts are usually required elsewhere, so it doesn't make sense to have them working in a kitchen for hours. Instead, the baking is done by the show's home economics team, whose ability is readily apparent for all who watch the show. Unfortunately, they also get stuck with more mundane tasks, which include cooking Paul Hollywood's breakfast and reviewing all the contestants' planned signature and showstopper recipes. They also must source all the necessary ingredients and equipment. It's worth noting that the team begins sourcing ingredients up to two months before the show starts. Bake Off is built upon a competitive but friendly environment. Bunting flaps in the wind, contestants hug and support each other, while hosts have been known to cry when their new friends are voted off the show. In short, The Great British Bake Off is a testament to the undeniable power of decency in stressful situations. Unfortunately, the goodwill demonstrated on the show is not always reflected by those watching. Bullying of the contestants on social media by so-called fans is a depressingly familiar occurrence. The most infamous incident was undoubtedly the bullying of contestant Laura Adlington, who made the final in 2020. Paul Hollywood stepped in to label the behavior disgusting. Alas, the trolling shows no sign of abating, with 2021 contestants detailing the hate mail they've received on social media. When COVID-19 hit, whether Bake Off would be canceled or not was the least of most people's worries. However, the nation rejoiced when it was announced that the show would go ahead after the creation of a bubble system that saw all staff and contestants isolated together for six weeks at Down Hall Hotel Essex. There was an opportunity for some sort of normality to reign, and many saw the cast and crew as heroes for putting up with the bubble to deliver a Bake Off similar to the one we all know and love. Once we all walk into the tent, I think it'll get back to something very, very familiar. However, the bubble was not all as mundane and self-sacrificial as one may initially have thought. Indeed, both presenters Noel Fielding and Matt Lucas hosted events, whilst all of the staff, including Hollywood and Leith, were at the hotel bar often. The 2021 season finale of Bake Off drew an audience of over 7 million viewers. As a result, it's not hard to see why the famed baking show has inspired the BBC to launch many other similar television programs. Most of these shows follow a familiar format wherein several amateur enthusiasts battle through a range of challenges, with one person being eliminated each week until a champion is crowned. However, despite sticking to a tried and tested formula, the broadcasting company's endeavors have been met with mixed results. The Great British Sewing Bee, which markets itself as the ultimate sewing battle, has done reasonably well, receiving a boost of viewers in the shape of aspiring enthusiasts during the lockdown. Yet the show has struggled to reach a wider audience due to the seemingly less accessible challenges. Unsurprisingly, it is one thing to bake a Victoria sponge and quite another to attempt to sew a whole outfit. Unfortunately, another of the BBC's Bake Off-inspired gambits fared much worse than Sewing Bee, the Great Pottery Throwdown, which sought to ignite a national passion for pottery making, really struggled to capture that Bake Off magic and was axed in 2018. Bake Off's rip-roaring success is now so all-encompassing that it is hard to imagine anyone doubting its ability to thrive on the small screen, but it has recently become apparent that there are many who did. Anna Beatty, who came up with the original idea behind The Great British Bake Off, pitched the show for a whole four years until it was accepted. It's the first time the bakers have really got to impress us and really show us what they can do. 
As for the inspiration behind the show, Beatty's friend reportedly told her about bake-offs that took place in the U.S. Beatty decided to match this competitive structure with a very British village fete. The killer combination of judges Mary Berry and Paul Hollywood, who couldn't believe his luck when he got the callback, were then added. Hollywood told the Daily Mail that everyone was shocked by the show's meteoric rise. For Beatty, it must have seemed like all those long years pitching had finally paid off. If you think that being a contestant on the show is difficult, then please spare a thought for the production team who have the Herculean task of capturing the frantic action of 12 very stressed bakers. Even with multiple cameras in the tent and every contestant wearing a mic, the production team is bound to miss a few things. But they have a few strategies in place to mitigate these losses and ensure that key moments are not the ones being missed. First and foremost amongst these is a rule that states all contestants must signal a camera to capture the moment a bake is put in the oven and the moment it's taken out. This is why you so often hear a contestant utter the famous line, I'm going in. The mixture is still liquid. However, despite the crew's best efforts, not everything can be captured in real time, meaning that the production team sometimes asks contestants to repeat certain actions. This type of tweaking is commonplace in nearly all cooking and reality shows. Great British Bake Off mania is everywhere, leading to a variety of spin-offs being produced. The most beloved of these is The Great Celebrity Bake Off, which involves various celebrities competing across the usual challenges with the goal of raising money for charity. To date, the supported causes have been sport relief, comic relief, and most recently, Stand Up to Cancer. Junior Bake Off, a children's version for aspiring bakers aged 9 to 12 years old, debuted on CBBC back in 2011. However, it is the latest addition to the Great British Bake Off empire that is definitely the most daring yet. The Great British Bake Off, The Musical, is a new theater production which will chart the journeys of multiple bakers as they vie for baking's top prize. Launching in July 2022, the show hopes to imitate the success of other food-related musicals, such as Waitress, which was nominated for Best Musical in the 2016 Tony Awards. From soggy bottoms to hot buns, Innuendo has been a part of Bake Off since its inception. Not only is it a vital part of what makes the show work, but it's also a reflection of British banter as a whole. Paul Hollywood agrees, telling The Guardian, British culture has always been based off it. Carry On Films did it for 30 years. It's in our DNA to giggle at ourselves. And giggle at themselves they certainly do. In fact, a recent comment made by Prue Leith left Hollywood in stitches, demonstrating that the newer members of the show are more than happy to uphold Bake Off's racy tradition. It's, no matter what it is, it's going in. For some viewers, these jokes are far from funny, with a few suggesting that in recent seasons, Bake Off has become far too smutty. But for the majority of viewers, the banter helps make the show so endearing. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more mashed videos about your favorite baking shows are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.